Well, howdy, Cornerstone family. For the month of October, we thought we'd get a little bit country as we worship our Savior and we study God's Word. So join us today. Gather around the couch. Thank you for joining us online. Let's start to praise our Lord in Jesus' name. Good morning, church family. Let's lift our hearts together. Come on, let's sing this. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Yes, I want to see you. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Yes, I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes, open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you, yes, I want to see you, open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, yes, I want to see you, to see high and lift it up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, 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 to see you high and lift it up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. We sing our holy, 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 holy. You are holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. You are holy. Holy, 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 you are holy, 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 I want to see you, to see you high, to see you high and lift it up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy to see you high and lifted up shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy we cry out holy Holy, 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 I want to see you. You are holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. You are holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. Sing about his love. I'm gonna lift up him again. Over the mountains and the sea, your river runs with love for me. And I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth.
You've been so, so kind to me Whoa, lift it up Love of God, oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves at 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. Snow wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, now you won't tear down, coming after me. Come on, take it up. No shadow. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, now you won't tear down, coming after me. No shadow you won't Coming after me No wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Coming after me Oh, the overwhelming Never-ending Reckless love of God Oh, it chases me down Fights till I'm found Leaves the night and night couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Holy, overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Come on, one more time, family. Lift it up. Lift up your hearts. Holy, overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Holy, overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Father, we thank you for your love. Thank you that you pursue us. Thank you you come after us. No matter what we've gone through, what we've been through, God, you pursue our heart. You want all of us, every part of us. So, Father, we thank you for this time of worship. Thank you we can join together as a family online. I pray you just open our hearts right now to receive your message. Bless our pastor as he speaks, God. We long to hear from you. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, all God's people say, amen.
Well, good morning, Cornerstone family. Wow, it has been a very hot week, hasn't it? But praise God, we have a cool building that we can worship in and a safe building to worship our Lord and Savior. Uh, over the last several weeks, we've been looking into the book of Revelation and what Jesus says to the churches. And it's not just the churches in Asia Minor, but it's also to you and I, because he says in each church, to him who has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So these, these letters are for us as well. Now, if you could imagine just for a moment, if you could just ask Jesus, if you could just have coffee with him tomorrow morning and just have alone time with him and ask him, Jesus, what do you see in my life? How, how, how could we be closer? How, how could we have a close, intimate relationship each of these churches exactly is exactly what he'd say to you and I. Because each of these churches, we can reflect on something that we can apply in our own life. You see, the message here is that God is extending his mercy to us before he judges this world. And that's our big idea as we study uh, the book of Revelation is God is extending his mercy to you and I. So when he talks to the church in Ephesus, they're a busy church. They're doing a lot of good things, and maybe today you're really busy. <laughs> you're doing some great things, but you lost or left your first love. And so what would Jesus say to you? He'd say, you're too busy. He'd say, keep first things first. And if we put Jesus first in our life, Everybody wins. Our spouse wins. Our kids win. Our parents win. Our, our co-workers win. We need to keep Jesus first in our life. And then when he talked to the church of Smyrna, it was a church that was suffering. They were going through a lot of persecution and heartache. And, and we looked at churches around this world right now, churches that are suffering hardship, churches that are being threatened daily, Christians that are even to the point where they've lost their lives. And, and so what would you say to you if, if you're suffering, if you're going through a hardship, going through a difficult time, you'd say, hold on. Heaven is real. It's not that much longer. Just hold on. He is faithful. He is true. And heaven is worth it. Well, what about the church in Pergamum? Uh, this church was a church that they had some things that they were doing well, but they also started to become lenient, and they became uh, a church that started to allow sin to enter in. And it was like, oh, it's no big deal, you know, and, and, and we do that at times, right? We allow things that we know that are harmful to us or harmful to our, our relationships. We allow it into our lives, and, and we see that it eventually destroys us. It definitely will hurt us. And so Jesus would say, repent, turn back to him. Be careful. When we start to compromise in the little areas, it can destroy and undermine our faith and our relationships. And then the church in Thyatira, I mean, they, they were completely compromising on everything. And, and, and what would he say to us? If that's us right now, he'd say he loves us and we need to turn back to him. Because his grace and his mercy will lead us in a close relationship with him. Then the church of Sardis. Uh, the church of Sardis was the church that was dying. Uh, they were nearly dead. And, and, and so what did he say to them? He said, wake up. Repent, turn back. You need to be revived. You need to wake up. Pull out the paddles, right? It, it's time to wake up in our faith. And then the church of Philadelphia. Uh, this church was the brotherly love church, the church that was faithful, but they, they had very little power, very little strength. But that's okay. Maybe that defines you today. You're faithful, but you just have a little bit of strength left. Let Jesus be your strength, your source. He's opened the door for you to share the good news of salvation with those around you. Well, today, we're going to look at the church of Laodicea. And this is the church that Jesus says, you're a lukewarm church. You're a complacent church. 
And we're going to take a look what he would say to them. And before we do, I want to look at um, the history behind this church. It'll help us understand a little bit more when Jesus speaks to them and speaks to us. This, this city uh, was devastated around 60 AD from a terrible earthquake, uh, and as well as Philadelphia was destroyed. And, and so um, Laodicea, they were so wealthy, uh, they decided they didn't want any financial aid from the government. Can you imagine that? No, Rome, we don't want any. We're wealthy enough on our own. We, we can do this ourselves. They rolled up their sleeves, and they did. They rebuilt their whole city, and it was beautiful. They had uh, great uh, trade. Uh, they were on the, the route where the Asian trade was happening, and, and so they, they had this uh, commodity of, of black wool that was very, very rare, and, and people would pay lots of money for this. They, they also had this eye salve uh, that was for healing of uh, eye problems, and, and so they made a lot of money. And In fact, uh, it was noted that there was just money in the streets, I and mean, it was just a very wealthy community, very affluent group of people, and of course, that happened that they were affluent people in the church. And so you could imagine, you know, hey, we're doing well. Financially, we're doing great. Did you see the, uh, the next edition that we added? We're doing great. Everything's great. But they were apathetic in, in their faith. Even though they were famous for the black wool, they were famous for the eye salve, uh, Jesus said that they were spiritually naked and spiritually blind. Well, one more thing about this, um, this area, this, this city. There wasn't a, a regular water supply in the city. And, and so uh, to the east of them was uh, Colossae, and that was about 10 miles. And they had refreshing cold springs there. But that was too far. And then just six miles to the north uh, in Hierapolis was some hot springs. And so they decided to make a stone aqueduct for uh, literally six, almost seven miles long and bring that hot springs water all the way to delayed to see Well, if you could imagine over miles and miles of through this stone aqueduct, the water was bitter. It was bitter. It picked up all these minerals, and it started out that way, right? It was hot, but by the time it got to Laodicea, it was no longer hot, but it was lukewarm. And it had a smell to it. It had a taste to it. And if you were to walk into the city and wanted a cool, refreshing glass of water, uh, this would not be what you're looking for, and you might literally spew it out of your mouth. And that's what he says to this church. You're lukewarm. You're lukewarm in your faith. You're complacent in your faith. You want just enough of God in your life, but not enough to really change you. So what does Jesus say to the church that is lukewarm, to the church that is complacent? The first thing he says is, examine the honest truth about ourselves. Examine the honest truth about ourselves, because the truth is, they didn't really see the problem. They thought they were fine. Look what he says. Revelation three fourteen. To the angel of the church in Laodicea write, these are the words of the amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. Look how Jesus describes himself. He's the Amen. Uh, we use that when we pray, right? And amen is the end uh, of our prayer, which means let it be so. Jesus is the answer to our prayers. All of God's promises are yes in Jesus. He is faithful. He is true. Uh, this is referring back to God's character. In Isaiah chapter 65, verse 16, we read this. Whoever invokes a blessing in the land will do so will do so by the God of truth. He who takes an oath in the land will swear by the God of truth. For the past troubles will be forgotten and hidden from my eyes. God is making a promise for the future that if we turn to him, 
that he'll remove our sins. He'll forgive us because he's the God of truth and we can trust in him. Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse six, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto the Father except through me. There's no other way. There's no other truth. He is the life. This is who is speaking to us today. He's the one that was speaking to this church that was apathetic, that was complacent in their faith. He says, I know your deeds, that you're neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot or cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. Now, it's it's interesting that Jesus says, I'd rather you either be hot or, or cold, right? Isn't lukewarm kind of in the middle? At least that's better than being totally cold, you know? But see, the problem is, when we're, when we're hot, uh, when we have a, um, a passion in our faith, and Jesus talks about that at the end of this uh, letter here, God can move us. He can, he can use us. Like John, he's an example of being, uh, you know, hot for his faith. He, he shared the Lord with everyone around him. He was put in jail because he would not shut up about his faith in Jesus Christ. And when, when we're hot for the Lord, when we're, when we're seeking him with all of our, our heart, mind, soul, and strength, he can guide us and he can move us. But if we're cold, well, that seems like, well, who would want anyone cold? Well, Jesus says the middle, and you're playing the middle right now, you don't even realize you're not really loving God and, and you're not really obviously in sin that you can see in your own life. And so you're just this lukewarm person. So I, I think of the cold person, maybe an analogy of that would be maybe the thief on the cross. And, and, and as him and, and his other friend there, the other thief, he recognized, he goes, wait a minute, wait a minute, we deserve this. And he looked at Jesus and he said, but he's innocent. And he asked Jesus to remember him, and Jesus did. He, he forgave his sins, and he became saved by God's grace and mercy right there on the cross. Because when we're cold, then we can acknowledge that we are sinners before God, which is the first step to becoming right with God is we got to repent. But that lukewarm period, that lukewarm person is like um, Judas. You know, he's a great example of this because Everyone knew him as a disciple of Jesus, right? He's one of the 12. But he really didn't have faith in Jesus. He didn't have a life-changing relationship in Jesus. And I think one of the problems about being lukewarm is, is that we, we uh, feel guilty for our sins because we got caught or, or because people look down on us. But we don't want to change we don't want to follow the truth. Jesus says, I'd rather you be hot or cold because then I can work with you. Then I can, you can see your heart. But when you're lukewarm, basically you're asleep in your faith. Just like the water that was hot at one time, by the time it reached Laodicea, it became lukewarm. You just wanted to spew it out of your mouth. You see, the church, the people in the church, they were complacent in their faith, but Jesus is the amen. They were apathetic, but Jesus was faithful. They, were, they had lost their testimony, and yet Jesus is the true testimony. So our first step is we need to examine the honest truth about ourselves you know, Psalm 139, this is a, a daring prayer, and I want to encourage you to pray this prayer this morning and, and pray it through this week. This is a prayer that King David wrote. And, and we all know David, you know, he was, he was definitely very on fire for the Lord, and then he also got very cold. And after his sins and his shame and his guilt before the Lord, and he confessed his sins of Bathsheba, and 
and he got right with the Lord, and, and there's war in his household, and he, and he recognized, wow, this is all because of what I have done. He makes this incredible prayer in Psalm 139. He says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Put, point, point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. What a tremendous prayer. God, test me. Search me. God, if there's something in my life that offends you, point it out because I don't want to keep living this way. I don't want to be complacent in my faith. So first step is to examine the honest truth about ourselves. The second step would be to admit my, dis- my desperate need for God. We need to admit that we need God. The problem with the Laodiceans, they they didn't realize that they were far away from the Lord. You see, they were self-reliant. They were independent. I I think in America, we've gotten rid of most gods from Babylon, wouldn't you say? But there's one God we have not gotten rid of yet. It's us. We're self-reliant. You know, I don't need God. I got I got enough money. I, in California, you know, it's like, yeah, I got I got money. I'm I'm putting money in my 401k. I got my health. Until you don't, we're self reliant. Instead of admitting that we need God, Jesus goes on to say in in verse 17, he says, "You say I'm rich. I've acquired wealth and do not need a thing." but you do not realize that you are wretched, woe, that you're pitiful, that you're poor, that you're blind and naked. Wow. Admit our need for God. Spiritually, they were pitiful. They were wretched. They were poor. They were blind. They were deceived. They were self-reliant on themselves. Galatians chapter 6, Paul reminds us, he, he says, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. See, you can't play games with God. The one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. And the one who sows to the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. And and it's true, right? If if I'm sowing seeds of hatred, guess what I'm going to get back? Hatred. If I'm sowing seeds of anger, lust, selfishness, guess what I'm going to get back? But if I sow into the Spirit love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, then we reap eternal life. We can't mock God. Let's admit our desperate need and come to him. What I think is amazing is Jesus says, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. He's giving more time, isn't he? He's extending mercy, isn't he? Paul says, if we sow in the Spirit, we'll reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. So first step. We need to examine the honest truth about our lives. The second step. We need to admit our desperate need for God. And and our third step, we need to receive what Jesus offers. That he is offering a relationship with him. Look what he says. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so you can become rich. But they were rich. Yeah, physically, their bank accounts, 
but not spiritually. They needed to come to Jesus and admit that they needed him and receive Jesus into their lives. Then he says, I counsel you to buy gold refined in the fire so you can become rich and white clothes to wear so you can cover your shame. You remember they exported this black wool that was very, very valuable. And you would think if I'm, I'm dressed out in this black wool, man, look how posh I am. I Look how, how elegant I am. And Jesus is saying, that's not covering your sin, your shame. Spiritually, you're exposed. But Jesus wants to cover our shame. This is why he went to the cross and died for our sins and rose again. And then he says, and salve to put on your eyes so you can see. Remember that they exported this eye salve? Jesus is saying you're spiritually blind right now. You don't see your own sin. You don't see your own compromise, that you're complacent, that you, you have a, just enough church in you, you know, during the week you go to church a little bit, just enough every now and then, so you feel a little good about yourself, you don't feel too bad about yourself, so you're good. You're good. No, you're not. You're blind. You're naked. You're poor. You need Jesus. Verse 19, he says, those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. Now, I know this, this verse seems very harsh, right? But do you see, he says, those whom I, I what? I what? We need to receive this letter as a child who is loved by God. Yes, he's rebuking us. If we're being complacent and, and we're just buying time, he's rebuking us because he loves us. He's about to spit us out of his mouth. There's two things I think about that statement. You know, the mouth of Jesus. There's two things. One, that we are his spokesmen on this earth, aren't we? That we share the good news of Jesus around us. We are his witnesses. He told us that we would be the witness in this world because we're the ones who have experienced grace and mercy in our lives. He says, I'm about to end that. Can you imagine, this is a letter to the, the pastor of the church. If I was the pastor and Jesus said this to me, I would be heartbroken that I'm about to say no more. You're not gonna be a light in this community. You're not gonna have a word about me in this community because you're lukewarm. No one wants to hear that. The other thing I, I think about is Jesus, from his mouth, he is our advocate before God the Father. Day and night. Can you imagine that ending? I, if, if I'm a pastor and I'm reading this, and, and, and I'm, I'm frightened that Jesus is saying, your testimony is about done. He's calling us to repent, to turn to him. What I notice is that in verse 20, he says, here I am. Even though we've made him sick, he hasn't left. He hasn't spewed us out of his mouth. He says, here I am. I'm extending my mercy. Here I am. Judgment is coming. Here I am. I'm extending my mercy. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. Now, this is written to the church at Laodicea. 
This is not written to unbelievers. It's written to the church. I stand at the door and knock. Philadelphia last week is the church of the open door. Here's the church with the closed door. But Jesus, in his grace, in his mercy, he's knocking at the door. But notice that it says, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. He says, if anyone. I can't open that door for you. And you can't open that door for me. It's a personal decision. Jesus wants an intimate relationship with each of us, but we must turn to him. Stop being self-reliant on ourselves and be honest before God. We are wretched in your sight. We need your forgiveness. We need your mercy. Cover our sins, Lord. Help us to see spiritually so that we can acknowledge the sin in our lives and confess that and find forgiveness and refreshment in our spirits. He's standing at the door and knocking. Do you hear his voice? Do you notice his promise here? He says, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. What a promise. Uh, this is a fellowship meal. This is, this is at the end of the day meal where you come together at the end of the day and you would dine together, laugh and talk and converse with each other. This isn't a 12 o'clock meal where I just got to get a Costco hot dog and, and get on with business. This is fellowship he wants to have with you and I. And then he says, to him who overcomes, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne just as I overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Wow, do you get the imagery here? This is probably the greatest promise he gives to all the churches, and it's the church that he wants to throw up. He says, come and sit with me. Come and sit with me. I, I remember a, a picture my son had in high school. And it was a picture of a young boy, young man, sitting in the lap of Jesus, just kind of laying back in the lap of Jesus, being held by Jesus. And I remember my son saying how much that, that picture helped him, knowing that Jesus cared and wanted that kind of relationship. He wants you to come and be with him. Sit with him. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Are you complacent in your faith right now? Are you just getting by? You know, just enough church, just enough singing, just every now and then I'll read the Bible just, just to make me feel a little bit better about myself. I'll pray every now and then. Jesus would rather you hot or cold. Are you complacent? Now's the time to listen to his voice. You see, he wants a close, intimate relationship with each and every one of us. But individually, we must make a decision to be all in, to love God with our heart, our mind, and our soul with all of us. Now is the time. Would you pray with me? With our heads bowed and our eyes closed. Lord, we ask your forgiveness for being complacent in our faith, for being lukewarm, Lord, where we make you want to vomit. Such a harsh analogy. But Lord, we get it. We can't be complacent any longer. We can't just barely get by in our faith. God, you're calling us deeper. You're calling us into a personal relationship with you. Lord, set our souls on fire. Help us to love you with all of our being. 
Lord, we thank you for your grace and your mercy that you are, even this moment, extending your mercy to us. If we will just hear your voice and open our hearts. And as we're praying right now, I, I'm praying that you would just open your heart to the Lord. Confess your sins to him. If there's an error in your life you need to repent, don't wait. Do it now. Also, I want to give you the opportunity. If you have not yet surrendered your life into Jesus, I, I just I want to give you that opportunity right now. I'll pray a prayer out loud and you can pray with me. Just be honest before the Lord. Just say, Dear Jesus, today my heart's been cold. <laughs> I've been indifferent. I've even been lukewarm. But I understand that you love me. So Lord Jesus, I, I come to you. I confess I am not holy in myself. I am not self-sufficient in myself. Lord, I am spiritually blind, broken, naked. God, I need your forgiveness. So, Lord Jesus, I ask that you come in to my life. Forgive me of my sins. Thank you that you want to cover my shame and my guilt. This is what you went to the cross for, to make me right with you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins and rising again on the third day. Help me now to live my life to honor you the best I know how. It's in the powerful name of Jesus I pray, amen. If you made a decision today to follow the Lord, please let me know. I'd love to uh, encourage you and help you out with your faith. If you'd like a study Bible, we'd love the honor of giving you one of those. You can text 858-682-2424. Text the word BELIEVE. That's 858-682-2424. Or if you just want to connect to our church or find out more about what we're doing, just text the word CONNECT. Now let's continue to worship with Pastor Joy and Kim. down, we lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus, the greatness of His mercy and love at the feet of Jesus, and we cry, holy, holy, holy. And we cry, holy, holy, holy. We cry, holy, holy, holy is the Lamb. We fall down. We fall down, we lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus. Greatness of His mercy and love at the feet of Jesus. We cry holy. down we fall down we lay our crowns at the 
at the feet of Jesus, the greatness of His mercy and love, at the feet of Jesus, we cry, holy, 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 we cry. Father, we worship you. You alone are holy. You alone are worthy of all the glory and all the praise. Thank you for this time. Continue to be with us in our homes, in our community. God, be with our families. Be with every brother, every sister, God. Thank you for this time. Continue to unite us every day as a church family. Father, we love you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, all God's people say, amen. All right, all right, all right. Thank you for joining us today online. Please welcome to join us every single Sunday, 915, live and in person here at Cornerstone Poway. In the meantime, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you for joining us today, and uh, you're welcome to join us here on campus or stay watching online. We just are grateful for your generosity and helping more people find and follow Jesus. You can click on the link below and help us serve God more. God bless. God bless you.